<coughs> and welcome to Let's Play Radiant Dawn. This is 2-3. So, 2-3 is a map based around getting Joffrey to the Seas Point. However, the actual main objective of that map, um, from my perspective, would be getting the Speedwing. There are three Speedwings in the game. Uh, one of them is in 3-9, one of them is two in 2-3, two, and one of them is in one end game. I need one Speedwing for Ike. I need one Speedwing for Scrimmier, and I'm going to need one Speedwing for Tyronio. And so, since I need multiple Speedwings, and if you lose a Speedwing, you have to, like, give give up other valuable resources, it is best to just take the turn penalty in this map, and I'm going to lose one turn um, and get a five turn instead of a four turn, which is definitely possible. So Joffrey starts 20, no, sorry, 33 tiles away from the boss. And so if you kill the boss on turn four, you can seize on turn four. And since you have Calvary with Tellius Canto, this is actually not that hard to do. But the main issue with doing that, obviously, would be losing the speedway. So on turn one, I actually get to do a Paladin Scooch with uh, Joffrey and Marsha. So, that's kind of cute. The main difference, though, between this Paladin Scooch and, say, a standard Paladin Scooch is that in Tellius, you cannot Paladin Scooch, you cannot rescue a non, uh, a cavalry unit. And so, you have to always be, uh, they have to have the shove command, I think, in order to be rescuable. It seems like that's actually how it's done in code. And so, as a result, the only unit you can rescue chain in this map is Domved. There's also some yellow units. Uh, we can mostly ignore yellow units. They are kind of annoying in that they fight a lot. And so my main strategy for dealing with them is just to get yellow units into a corner and just have them block the enemies off. So another important point about this map is that you get bonus experience awarded for every enemy you fail to kill. Now, this doesn't matter too much in a 0% gross context because... The bonus experience from this map is only available in 2 Endgame and in, starting in 311. So you can't actually promote anybody relevant until 311 anyway with this bonus experience. And by that point, you get two more Paragon Scrolls from Joffrey and Astrid. So there's actually almost no value in this bonus experience. I get it anyway, just because I can, but in actual fact, it's not that necessary. <clears throat> so on this, the rest of this map clear is about moving forward as fast as possible. Um, Kirin, Marsha, Danved, and Mar Maklov are ha heading for a collision course with the with a bot with the Speedwing uh, Halberdier, and Joffrey is going to have to. Blitz down to get to the seize point. Every enemy killed, you would think, is bad, bad. Is not bad at all. Like people meme about trying to minimize the number of enemies you kill, and while it's true, I think in practice it's a lot easier if you just kill off some enemy units rather than trying super hard to <coughs> keep yourself alive. Domvid finds an arm scroll. That's a little bit of money, which is nice for the Grailmarks, who are always very poor. But that arm scroll obviously didn't doesn't have the highest success rate. But because I first tried this map, I didn't really pay much attention to the success rate of finding that arm scroll. Uh, this map was first tried, and you can tell I first tried this map and didn't bother resetting because there's an upcoming enemy which could have definitely ended the run, who had a thirty who had a displayed thirty. Eight, if I remember correctly, on Kieran, and I just didn't notice. So one thing you may notice is, this, is that this enemy phase takes a really long time. Um, Radiant Dawn is famous for having really long enemy phases. But that's actually not so much a function of how long at Radiant Dawn enemies take to attack you or anything. It's just a function of how many enemies there are on a typical Radiant Dawn map to compare to a typical GBA map. 
Radiant Dawn enemies take five seconds to end their turn, compared to GBA enemies, which take seven seconds to end their turn if you kill them. And so, Radiant Dawn enemies are actually faster to die, but the big drawback is that in Radiant Dawn, there are so many more enemies on the map, and they do so many more actions that it takes a lot longer. Now, on to turn three. The main goal of turn three is setting up a movement chain so that on turn four, we can get the Halberdier with the Speedwing to come down. And then on turn five, we can kill him. So on this turn specifically, there is, on the left corner there, you'll see that there's a Cavalier that I kind of forgot about. But that Cavalier has a Horse Lair. And you kind of don't want Kieran to be where I put Kieran. Um, by putting Kieran where I put him, uh, that Cavalier can actually attack Kieran and can kill him. So what you want to do is you want to place... is you want to place Karen like, one square to the left and place, like, Makalov one square to the... Sorry, place Karen and Makalov one square to the right of where they are. That Cavalier's movement range... Sorry, put Karen and Makalov... Put Karen two squares to the right and one, one, one square to the right, one square down, Makalov one square to the right. That way he'll be out of range of that stupid horse player guy. And Marsha will kill him instead. Alternatively, you could try to have, like, Donved move forward somehow instead of having Karen be in the front... Uh, because you just don't want to be killed by Horse Slayer guy. Now, admittedly, also part of this is my fault for, like, getting this stupid formation. If I, like, moved Kieran and Makalov into a better position, they wouldn't actually be hit by all these stupid rocks. So they're killing yellow units, um... As mentioned before, I try to avoid fighting. And that was the guy who had the horse layer who could have killed Kieran. <laughs> and as you can know, you had one extra movement, so you need to move two squares away from him in order to avoid fighting. The rest of this map is just waiting. The that that halberdier on the right hand side there is the halberdier with a Speedwing, and so in order to, we have to activate him on this turn. In theory, if you had move full forward every turn on this map, this turn you would actually break down the wall and then kill the boss, which is quite a clever thing you can do. Obviously, I didn't do that because I didn't have the positioning, but if you were playing more optimally, you could do that. I didn't do that intentionally because I was t more concerned with making sure that the Halberdier moved into a position I wanted him to, him to move. And because I'm not killing the boss, I actually, I'm not killing the boss on this turn, I don't have to kill the boss at all. The boss will actually move regardless of whether or not you attack him. And as such, the boss will just move to Joffrey's position, and I don't have to worry about... Um attacking the boss at all. <sighs> yeah, so the boss moves to Joffrey, and then Donved is just going to plug the holes and heal. This will set up the four-person attack chain to kill the Halberdier that blocks the way. And then after you kill the after you four-person attack chain the Halberdier... Uh, Joffrey can just cease. You know, I didn't really pay much attention to trying to avoid to kill red units. I think a big mistake people make on this map is trying to avoid killing red units. Like, yes, it's nice for a lot of bonus experience, but it makes the map way harder. Because the more red units are alive, the more you have to worry about red units attacking your units. And dead men can tell no tales, or... You know, dead things can't fight you. The one other thing to note is that my Speedwing Obtainer is going to have to be Donved because I want the Speedwings to be in the convoy. 
For some reason in this map, uh, the convoy is shared between this map and two endgame. I think that was a mistake, but I guess it makes it a lot easier to program. So as you can tell, the boss moved out of the way, and now if we can kill the, the Mr. Halberdier guy, we can just have Joffrey seize the throne without having a single enemy unit um, attack, attacking... Without having a single enemy unit needed to be killed, without having to kill the boss, which is really important because the boss is that kind of tanky and crits you a lot, so it's a really good idea to not have to deal with him. Alright, so on this turn, we have to kill the Myrmidon in the way of Donved, and then Makalov plus Kirin can poke the Halberdier, and then um, Danved finishes him off. Maybe you could have gotten a better weapon for Kirin. Um, Silver Axe kind of has bad hit, so like a Iron Axe would have maybe been a better idea. Then Donved kills the soldier. You could also trade uh, Joffrey's Brave Lance to Donved. That could also have worked. Anyway, that's 2-3 cleared in 5 turns, and I'll see you guys next time for 2 endgame. Bye-bye!